Bible Society, Brother Felix Ekundayo Adedoku, please, may we hear you. May God help you. Beloved brothers, sisters, and friends, I give thanks to God Almighty, our Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, for keeping us all alive to be present in this gathering. I want to register my thanks also to the President, other members of the Executive Board, for giving me this opportunity once again to address his people in this gathering. The subject as announced by the president is, it pays a great deal to be godly. It pays a great deal to be godly. By godly is meant like God in character, in behavior, the way God does his things. It is good if we can behave that way. And not just only behaving that way, the subject says it pays a great deal. Much goodness is in it to be godly. This subject is not new. It is just to remind us all of our duties to ourselves and to God's holy organization. Please permit me to borrow the word of St. Paul, sorry, St. Peter, as it is recorded in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. He says something there. I want that place to lead me. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Please read. Wherefore, brothers and sisters, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Aha. It is not that you don't know them. You know them very well. But my duty, what the executive board has said I should do, is to remind you all, to remind ourselves. Keep on reading. Though ye know them, though you know them very well, go and on. be established in the present truth. And that is why we are members of the true organization. Keep on reading. Yea, Read I think it meets as long as I am in this tabernacle. Truly, it is very necessary. As long as we have our existence, as long as we have our being, Yes. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance. That's it. To stir you up. It isn't that you don't know them. But it is to remind you and to stir you up in doing what is right. It pays a great deal to be godly. Let us start from the very first book of the scriptures, Genesis. Adam and Eve... They had two children, named Cain and Abel. Now go to Genesis chapter 4. Read, and then what happened? Please list of the ground and offering unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Cain offered, saying, first part thereof, beautiful things he presented to God in offering. Yes. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Fine. And the Lord, Jehovah, had respect to the offering of Abel. Go on. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. But unto Cain and his offering, God never took it. Had no respect for it. Read on. And Cain was very wroth. Cain was not happy. Cain was wroth. Was very wrathful. Anger seed him. Anger overcame him. He was not happy, yes? And his countenance fell. And his countenance fell. And Read the on. Lord said unto Cain. Beautiful. And the Lord said unto Cain, yes? Why art thou wrought? Why are you annoyed? 
Why and why is thy countenance falling? Why is thy countenance has fallen? Yes. If thou doest well. If you have done well. Shall thou not be accepted? If you are godly minded, will I not accept your offering? And what happened? And if thou doest not well. And if you don't do well. Sin lieth at the door. Sin lieth at your door. It pays a great deal to be godly. Look at that godly mind that Abel had. Beautiful thing he presented to the Lord. In the book of Hebrews, and God now remembered him. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, God talked about Abraham, sorry, about Abel. Though dead, but yet speaketh. Because of his godly disposition, he was godly in his thoughts. In his action, it pays a great deal to be godly. Let's go quickly to our father, Abraham. Can you read me the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2? Then join it with Genesis chapter 18, from verse 1 right on to 10. We will see how godly it is and how someone will be rewarded when you are godly minded. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Please read. Let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. Read on. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Be not forgetful to entertain visitors or strangers. Go on. For thereby some have entertained angels so, unawares. For some, unknowingly to them, they have entertained angels. Now, Genesis chapter 18, reading from verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And that was Abraham. God appeared unto him, yes. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And the man was at ease under a tree, yes. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And when he looked. And lo, yes. three men stood by him. He saw three men by his side. What did he do? And when he saw them. Go on. He ran to meet them from the tent Look door. At that. That godly disposition. He ran towards them. And he did something. Let us hear, brothers and sisters and, and friends. What did he do? Yes. And bowed himself toward the ground. He bowed himself toward the ground, yes. And said, And said, My Lord, My Master, If now I have found favor in thy sight, If now I have found favor with you, Read on. Pass not away, I pray thee, from just, thy servant. Just don't go away like that. Please come in. Yes. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched. Read on. And wash your feet. And then refresh yourself. Go on. And rest yourselves under the tree. Read on, please. And I will fetch a morsel of bread. Look at that. Look at the, what he did to them. People whom he has not known. But God walked in him. That godly thought in him made him to behave that way. Read on. And comfort ye your hearts. Go on. That after that ye shall pass on. And after you have rested yourself, you may now continue your journey. Continue to read. For therefore are ye come to your servant. Aha, I'm just your servant. I'm here to serve you, yes. And they said. And they said. So do as thou hast okay. said. Okay, since you have this righteous mind, for us, do it. Read on. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah. And Abraham, please our sisters listen very carefully. And Abraham ran into the tent. And what did he do? And said. And said to the wife. Make ready quickly three please, measures please, of fine please, meal. Please, please, please. Let us now serve these people. I perceive that they are good men. Let us entertain them. It pays a great deal to be godly. Read on. Knead it and make cakes upon please, the earth. Please, my wife, please hurry up. Please do it. Do it for them. Yes. And Abraham ran unto the herd. And Abraham ran in to, and, his, to his animals. Yes. And fetched a calf tender and good. A uh hoe. -huh. Go on. And gave it unto a young man. Go on. And he hasted to dress it. Yes. And he took butter. Took butter. And milk. Milk. And the calf which he had dressed. Read on. And set it before them. Before them he set it. Read on. And he stood by them under the tree. Go on. And they did eat. And they ate. Go and on. And they said unto him. Yes. Where is Sarah thy wife? Fine. They saw in him while he was preparing this thing. Having told the wife. The wife agreed with the husband to entertain the visitors. Now, where is your wife? 
born and he said and he said behold in behold, the tent she is in the tent read on and he said go on i will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life in course of time in time to come your wife will have a, a child and indeed it was so genesis chapter 21 if you read from verse 1 and verse 2 it pays a great deal to be godly look at the godly mind that abraham and the wife they had towards the visitors and it has earned them something very very good it pays a great deal to be godly shall i quickly cite the story of the shunammite woman as it's recorded in second kings chapter 4 if you read from verse 6 to no from verse 8 right down to 16 or 17 here was this woman she had no child but then she noticed that yes there was this man always coming to their place uh -uh. no she thought within herself what will i do to encourage this man of god please read for me second kings chapter four read from verse eight yes and it fell on a day and it fell on a day that elisha passed to shunem this man called elijah was passing through yes there was a great woman there was this woman and they qualified her to be a great woman keep on reading and she constrained him to eat bread uh -huh. and she now asked the man of god to entertain or to be with them that he will entertain the man yes and so it was that and as oft as he passed by that's it each time the man passed by he turned in theater to eat bread. The man will go in and will relax. Go on. And she said unto her husband. Ah, look at that now. Please, our sisters. Please, our sisters. The women folk. Whenever you have something good in your mind, make it known to your husband. And so it was with the Shunammite woman. She now told her husband, yes. Behold now. Behold now. I perceive that this is an holy man of God. This is an holy man of God. Which passed by us continuously. Continue to read. Let us make a little chamber. Let I pray us thee. Now give him a befitting place to stay. So whenever he comes in, he will relax there. On the, on the wall. Yes. And let us set and let us set for him there a bed. Continue to read. And a table. Yes. And a stool. Go on. And a candlestick. Go on. And it shall be. And it shall when be. When he cometh to us. When this man now comes in. That he shall turn in either. The man will always be there. Read on. And it fell on a day. Uh -huh. That he came either. And so. And he turned into the chamber and lay there. They have already prepared the place. And to call the whole story short. The man of God Elijah now told her. You will have a child. And in course of time, she had a son. It pays a great deal to be godly. Another example I want to cite is the story of that harlot, Rahab. The name sounds stinking. A harlot? Of course. What she did to the spies? Go quickly to Joshua. Chapter 2, read from verse 1 to 4, verse 9, verse 12 to 14. Joshua, a harlot. God can use anybody to do good to a man of God. The subject is, it pays a great deal to be godly. Yes? And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent and, out of Shittim two men. That's it. Joshua now sent out people. To go and spy the land of Jericho. Yes? To spy secretly, saying... To spy the land of Jericho secretly. Read on. Go, view the land. Go, view the land. Even Jericho. Even Jericho. Read on. And they went... They went... And came into an harlot's house. Aha! Look at that. They came into a harlot's house. Named Rahab. Named Rahab. And lodged there. The house of a harlot. It was there. The people of God went into. Yes. And it was told the king of Jericho saying. And it was told the king. Look at what has happened. Read on. Behold. Behold. There came men in hither tonight. People had not come. Strangers. Whom we don't know. They have come into our land to spy it. Read on. Of the children of Israel to yes. search out the country. Read on. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab saying. That's it. 
The king now sent to Rahab, saying, Read Bring on. forth the men that are come to thee. Bring forth these men that have come to lodge with you. Which are entered into thine house. Which have come into your house, into your residence. Yes. For they become to search out all the country. They have come to search out our land. Go on. And the woman took the two men. And the woman, the harlot, took these two spies. Yes. And hid them. Look at that. She hid them. And said thus. Yes. There came men unto me. Nobody has come to me. But yeah. I wish not whence they were. I don't know where they are. At the risk of our lives, a message from the king. Why did she do that? She knew that they were men of God. She had a godly thought. She was godly in her thinking. And so she hid them in the roof of her house. At the risk of her own life. And it happened. Now read from verse 12 to 14. Now therefore, now therefore, I pray you. Now, Rahab, how we hid these two men? He now told them, please understand what I am doing at the risk of my life. Yes? Swear unto me by the Lord. Fine. Swear unto me by the Lord. Read on. Since I have shown you kindness. S since I have showed you kindness. That yes. ye will also show kindness unto my father's house. You also should show kindness to my father's house. Read on. And give me a true token. And then you will save me when you come to take over this land. Yes. And that ye will save alive my father and my mother. You will save alive my father and my mother. And yes. my brethren and my sisters. All that pertains to me, you will save them. Go on. And all that they have. Yes. And deliver our lives from death. Continue to read. And the men answered her. And the men, the two spies answered. The our woman. life for yours. Yes. We will do that for you. We will deliver you when we will have come to deliver this country. Chapter 9 of Joshua. No, chapter 6, sorry. Chapter 6. Joshua, chapter 6. Now read from verse 22 to 25. When indeed. They now went into Jericho. What happened? But Joshua have said unto the two men Joshua that have spied out the country. Joshua now told the two spies who went earlier and haven't conquered the country. Joshua now gave them instruction, yes? Go into the house of the harlots. Go into the house of the harlots, yes? And bring out thence the woman. And bring out a woman. And all that she had, all that she had, as he swore unto her, as we have sworn unto her. Read on. And the young men that we spies mm -hmm. within went in. And the young men that we spies, they went into the house of the harlot. And to cut the story short, they saved her. It pays a great deal to be godly. Why did the harlot? Why did she do that? At the risk of her life, she knew. That these men, they were godly men. Let me do the most I can to save them. And indeed, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31, God now said that the harlot Rahab is one of those that God has approved to have eternal life. It pays a great deal, brothers and sisters, to have a godly mind. If Rahab had got a very bad mind, oh, she would have just exposed these two spies. Look at them here. Kill them. But no, she knew that these were men of God and she hid them. Indeed, the Bible tells us that yes, anyone who does such a thing, please go to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, read from verse 40 to 42. He will receive a prophet's reward, like it happened to that woman. The Shunammite woman. Likewise, too, it has happened to Rahab. Matthew chapter 10, from verse 40 to 42. Please read. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. He that receiveth you also receives me. Go on. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Read on. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet. Like the Shunammite woman, she accepted. She received the prophet of God, Elisha. And she got the blessing of a prophet from God, Jehovah. Yes? Shall receive a prophet's reward. Shall receive a prophet's reward. And what is it? 
blessing. Go on. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man. Fine. The righteous man that Abraham received welcomed. She had that he had a righteous reward. That God blessed the womb of Sarah and she gave birth to Isaac. Read on. Shall receive a righteous man's reward. Shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink, uh, shall give to drink unto one of these little ones. And whoever will give to any of my servants. Read on. A cup of cold water only. Just to help them. Like Abraham did to the three men, the angels, unknown to him. Look at your reward. It pays a great deal to be godly. Let me quickly go to the story of David, Jonathan, and Saul. At first Samuel chapter 17, if you read from verse 54 right down, when David had killed Goliath, he now went gallantly to the head of that wicked man, Goliath. And gallantly, he went to meet the king. The king was surprised. Read. First Samuel chapter 17, from verse 54 to 58. And David took the head of the Philistine. And David took the head of the Philistines. And brought it to Jerusalem. And brought it to Jerusalem. Read on. But he put his armor in his tent. Continue to read. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine. And when Saul saw David went out to fight the Philistine. Yes. He said unto Abner, he said the captain unto, of the host. He said unto Abner. The, com the commander of his host. Yes. Abner. Abner. Whose son is this youth? Who is that boy? Who is that lad? Who could be so bold to go and fight Goliath? Who is he? Yes. And Abner said. And Abner said. As thy soul liveth, O king, I yes. cannot tell. I don't know him. He's from nowhere. Read on. And the king said, And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the stream is. Look at that. The king too was surprised. Go and find out for me. Who is the father of this boy? I want to know him. Read on. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, as David now returned from the slaughter of the kings, yes. Abner took him, Abner took David, and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine uh -huh. in his hand. Not just only he came alone, he came with the head of the Philistine, yes. And Saul said to him, And Saul said unto David, Whose son art thou? He was still surprised. Who are you? Who are you? You can fight so gallantly, yes. Thou young man. Thou young man. And I David, thought you wanted to waste your life. But look at it now. You have brought victory to the people of God. Read on. And David answered. And David answered. I am the son of thy servant Jesse the Bethlehemite. I'm just a small boy. And the story went on, on, and on like that. Chapter 18. Now read from verse 6 right down to 12. Please, our brothers and sisters, listen very carefully. I want to draw something from this. Chapter 18 of 1 Samuel, verse 6 to 12. Read on. And, uh, and it came to pass as they came. And after David had done this, yes. When David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines. When David was now coming back gallantly, yes. That the women came out of all the cities of Israel. God. Singing and dancing. Uh, as is usual with women. They were happy with the victory that God now gave to his people through David. And they sang, read on. To meet King Saul. To meet King Saul. With tablets. Aha. Uh -huh. with, with joy and with, with instruments, with instruments of, music. of music and happiness. Thinking that they were doing the right thing. Read on. And the women answered one another as and they the played. Women, in a joyful mood, they answered and said. And said. Yes. Saul had slain his thousands. Saul had slain his thousands. But David his ten thousands. But David his ten thousands. A commotion was come. Read on, brother. And Saul was very rough. Aha. Uh -huh. And the saying displeased him. Saul was not happy. And the saying displeased him. But when this giant of God, when he rose up, where were you? Where were you, the king? Did you not run away? And the women now came to express abstention to a godly man. 
who now, who now took away the reproach of Israel? You are not now annoying. Read on, brother. And he said, and he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousand. They have ascribed to David ten thousand. And to me, they have ascribed but thousands. Just one thousand. Look at that. And he, what can he have more and, but the kingdom? And what else will he have? Just the kingdom is only remaining. Yes. And so I, David, from that day Look and at that. forward. From that day, King Saul hated David. But David was not born that. He continued. Yes. And it came to pass on the morrow Go on. that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. The evil spirit now entered Saul. And what did he do? And he prophesied in the midst of the house. Read on, brother. And David played with his hand as and at other times. David, being a musician, played for the king. Read on. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And there was a javelin in the hand of King Saul. And what did he do? And Saul cast the javelin. And Saul now cast the javelin, yes. For he said, For he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. I will smite him to the wall. I will kill him. And, and David out avoided God. out of his presence and twice. And David now ran away. Read on, brother. And Saul was afraid of David. And right from that day, Saul was afraid of David. Quickly read me Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. So it was with King David. Of course, it was not yet king. So it was with David. Saul tried to spear him several times. But David, being a smart boy, and I will say in our language, being a smart guy, he dodged it. And right from that day, he was afraid of David. Read for me. Isaiah no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. That's it. Saul was not successful. Because David had a righteous mind. He was godly in all his thoughts. Now the story went on and on. Now go to chapter 24 of First Samuel. Read from verse 1. It's a long piece. Please, the president, permit me, sir. First Samuel 24. Read from verse uh, 1. And Until when we shall get to verse 20. If I don't lay stress on it, call my attention. Go on, brother. And it came to pass. And it happened. When Saul was returned from following the Philistines. When David had run away. The king started looking for David. Yes. That it was told him, saying, Go on. Behold, Look David is in the wilderness of anger. David has gone there to hide himself. Yes. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out uh, of all uh, Israel. A lazy man, uh, Saul, you are. Just one kill one small boy. You took 3,000 men. And he ran after him, yes. And went to seek David. Go on. And his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. Continue to read. And he came to the sheep coats by the way. Yes. Where was a cave. You know. And Saul went in to cover his feet. And Saul went in there to rest himself also. Go on. And, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. Already David was resting himself there. Please, brothers and sisters, listen to this story very carefully. I want to draw out something from there. Read on. And the men of David said unto him. And the men of David now told him, yes. Behold. Behold. The day of which the Lord said unto thee, behold. Uh -huh. Yes. I will deliver thine enemy into thine hands. I will deliver your enemy into your hand. Go on. That thou mayest do to him as he shall You will do unto him as you want to do. Yes. Then David arose. But David now got up. And cut off the skirt of Saul's robe. And privily. cut off the skirt of the robe of Saul. Read on. And it came to pass afterward. Yes. That David's heart smote him. A godly man. A godly man David was. Yes. And, I beg your pardon. Because he had cut off Saul's skirt. Because he has cut a part of his garment. His master's garment. Read on. And he said unto his men. And he said unto his men. The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master. No, 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 no. I wouldn't have done this to my master. The yeah. Lord's anointed. Because he's God's anointed, yes. To stretch forth my hand against him. Go on. Seeing is the anointed of the Lord. He is the anointed of God. Read so on. David stayed his servants with these words. And David now stopped his servants from doing any hurt to King Saul. Go on. And suffer them not to rise against Saul. Read on. But Saul rose up out of the cave. Aha, the careless fellow he was, King Saul. He arose. 
Yes. And went on his way. And he started going. Still David looking, also arose afterward. Thinking that he was looking for David. Yes. And went out of the cave. Yes. And cried after Saul, saying, Then David now cried after Saul, saying, My, my Lord, brothers, holy, 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 my brothers and sisters, please listen to the words of a godly man. Yes, my Lord, the king, my Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, and when Saul now looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth. David could not look at the face of the king. He could not look at the face of the master. Yes, and bowed himself. He bowed himself. And David said to Saul, And David now told Saul the king, Wherefore hearest thou men's words? Why are you listening to people's voice? Saying, yes. saying Behold, David be seeketh thy hurt. That David wants to kill you? Read on. Behold, Behold, This day thine eyes have seen how the Lord hath delivered thee today into my hand in the cave. You have not seen it for yourself? Read on. And some bade me kill thee. My boy said I should kill you. But my eyes spared thee. But I have pity on you. And I said. And I said. I will not put forth my hand against my Lord. Against my master? I will not do it. Read on. For he is the Lord's anointed. For he is the Lord's anointed. Go on. Moreover, my father. Moreover, my papa. See. Moreover, my father. See. Yea. Yea. See the skirt of thy robe in my hand. Look at your skirt. Part of it in my hand. Yes. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe. Read on. And killed thee not. I will have killed you. Look at the evidence in my hand. Yes. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. That's it. I don't have a bad mind for you. See that I'm a godly man. Read on. And I have not sinned against thee. I have not sinned against you. Yet thou huntest my soul to Yes. You are looking for me to pull me down. To kill me. What have I done? Yes. The Lord judge between me and thee. Fine. The Lord judge between you, King Saul, and myself. Continue to read. And the Lord avenge me of thee. And it is only God that can take revenge for me. Read on. But my hand shall not be upon My thee. house will not be on you, the king. Yes. As said the proverb of the ancients. That's it. The ancients have said it. And what did they say? Wickedness proceeded from the wicked. Wickedness proceeds from the wicked. Go on. But my hand shall not be upon thee. But my hands will not be upon you. Go on. After whom is the king of Israel and come out? And look at it after all. Who are you fighting? Yes. After whom dost thou pursue? Who are you looking for? Read on. After a dead dog. After a dead dog like me, David. After a flea. After a flea. A whole big somebody like you, a dignitary, looking for a small boy to assassinate. Read on. The Lord therefore be judge. The Lord therefore be judge. Go on. And judge between me and thee. And judge between you and me. Read on, brother. And see and plead my cause. It is only God that will plead my cause. Yes. And deliver me out of thine hand. Read on, brother. And it came to pass. And it happened, brothers and sisters. Listen again to this story. What is it? When David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul. When David had now finished speaking to Saul, what did he say? That Saul said. That Saul said. Is this thy voice? Is this your voice? My son David. My Peking. Now your voice be this. Who are your man? Yes. And Saul lifted up his voice and, and wept. Paul, sorry, Saul lifted up his voice and he wept. He cried. Yes. And he said to David. And he said unto David, we're now going to verse 20. Yes. Thou art more righteous than I. You are more righteous than I. Go on. For thou hast rewarded me good. You have rewarded me good. Whereas. Whereas. I have rewarded thee evil. Go on. And thou hast shown this day. Yes. How that thou hast dealt well with me. Continue to read. For as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, Go on. thou killest me not. You didn't kill me when you had the opportunity. Read on. For if a man find his enemy, it was Saul that was not talking. If a man now finds his enemy, what will he do with him? Yes. Will, will he let him go well will, away? Will he let him go away? Wherefore, yes. the Lord reward thee good. Look at it now. He has started talking now. Good of the man. A man who had a godly thought. Saul started praising David. Read on. For that thou hast done unto me.
for that you, thou hast done unto me. You have done thee. all this sin unto me. Read on. And now behold. And now listen, brothers and sisters. And now behold. I know well that thou shalt surely be king. Fine. It pays a great deal to be godly. And the story went on and on. And afterwards, David became king. David did not stop there. Now go to 2 Samuel chapter 9. If you read from verse 1 right down up to verse 7, you see that after Saul was dead with Jonathan, a good friend of David, now David now asks, is there anyone in the house of Saul and Jonathan that I will be good to? Then they now went out to search. And having got him, a young man, the son of Jonathan, they now brought him to David. And when the young man came, he was afraid of David. David now told him, don't be afraid. For your father's sake, I will do good to you. And the Bible now tells us, read, now we have cited, that this man, Second Samuel chapter 9, just read me verse 13. So Mephibosheth so dwelt in Jerusalem. Yes. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. Read on. For he did eat continually at the king's table. Can you do that? Can I do that? It pays a great deal to be godly. That is not the end of it. Brothers and sisters, I'm trying to wind up. The Bible now tells us, Psalm 125 verse 4, do good unto those that be good. Psalm 125 verse 4, read for me. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good. Yes. And to them that are upright in their hearts. Let us be upright in our hearts, brothers and sisters. And we are end up by using the words of Moses as recorded in Numbers chapter 6. Read me verses 24, 25, and verse 26. To bless this congregation of God's people as Moses himself did. And what did he say? The Lord bless thee. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you all. Yes. And keep thee. May God keep us all in his holy organization. Read on. The Lord made his face shine upon thee. May the face of God shine upon us for good. And be gracious unto thee. And may he give us peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank you all brothers and sisters. This is where I choose to end on this subject. It pays a great deal to be godly. May God bless you all. Thank you. This is another masterpiece. Please applaud him again. It pays a great deal to be godly. We have been very well fed tonight. I need not spoil the soup.